Hey there, this is Shua with another drawing tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, using rulers and I've got two examples here. Uh, I've got a clear ruler which is good for being able to see your work uh, through it as you go. Uh, it does slide around a little bit more easily than a stainless steel ruler uh, with a cork backing. So uh, most of the time I actually use a stainless steel uh, ruler but for today's purposes for the tutorial I'm going to use uh, this clear one so that we can see through uh, to the paper. I've got a few sheets of paper here uh, just because I like the way it feels when I have uh, more than just one sheet of paper on a hard surface. There's just a little bit more cushioning to it uh, which is nice. So. I'm going to talk first of all about uh, connecting two points, which might seem really, really mundane, uh, but I'm going to measure here uh, down an inch, and then I'm going to slide over here, I'm going to measure down an inch, and I'm going to talk about placement. Okay, I'm a left-handed person, so I'm holding my ruler with the right hand so that I have easy access to the straight edge side of the ruler. If I were right-handed, I would probably uh, flip the paper around this way so that the meat of the paper is underneath my hand so that I have a little bit more control over it. Uh, and my drawing hand would actually be taking the lighter side of the page, if that makes sense there. So, uh, i got the meat of the paper underneath my right hand. I'll usually put my pen down on one point, or my pencil. Uh, I'm using pen today so it shows up a little better on video. And I will slide my ruler up to the first point, and then using my thumb and my forefinger, I will kind of slide the, second, uh, the, the ruler up to the second point. Now, placement of the hand is very important, okay, so I'm always putting it in the middle. I always have uh, good tension that way. I spread. Uh, my thumb and my forefinger out so I can anchor it very uh, smoothly. A lot of times I'll see people and they'll hold it together like this. Uh, they'll hold their fingers together. That gives you a pivot point that doesn't serve the purpose of keeping a steady uh, line. Now, I'm going to start at this point and I'm going to pull halfway or a little bit further than halfway and then I'm going to go to this point and I'm going to pull the rest of the line up. And what that does is it's, it just ensures that I don't go past uh, my measuring marks. So. Uh, that's a really good way to kind of do that. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is uh, line weight. And we have what we call a light, medium, and heavy line weight. And I'm going to give you a demonstration of that. What I just did would probably be considered a medium to heavy line weight. But I'm going to do one, two, three there. And I'm going to come over here. And I'm zeroing out on the 13 on my ruler. I don't know if you can see that, but I consider that zeroed out because it's an inch mark. And so I know as I count down here from 13 to 12 is one inch. And one, two, three. I just put a dot where the inch is. All right, I'm going to start with a light line weight, and then I'm going to go to medium and then heavy. With a light line weight, I'm barely pressing down. Uh, the line should look almost uh, invisible. I drew it a little bit darker than I normally would so that it shows up on canvas. Uh, I think of a medium line weight as pretty normal pressure. Okay, and then we'll go to a dark line weight or a heavy line weight. And I'm really pressing down. You can probably hear the sound of that. Okay, so we have a light, a medium, and heavy line weight. And whenever I'm doing my initial marks on a page, I try as much as possible to use a light line weight. And uh, that just allows my drawings to have a little bit of elegance to them. And as I get darker and darker, those light line weights start to fade away. Okay, next thing I'd like to talk about is how to measure. Um, on rulers, a lot of times there's a zero, but it's not the pointy edge of the ruler. It's usually in about an eighth of an inch. Um, not true on all rulers, but one of the reasons why manufacturers do that is because these edges over time will get worn down and if your zero gets worn down then it throws off all the other measurements. Um, that being said, you could always zero off of your one. So if I wanted to come off of this line four inches, um, I could mark here and then measure over four inches, one, two, three, four. Since one was my zero, obviously I measure over to five and that's how I get that. But it's very important. Um, on a nice clean sheet of paper like this, it's very easy to get started because I can use the edge of my paper as kind of my starting point. Um, so that's just kind of neat. Uh, also, each ruler is divided into halves, quarters, eighths, uh, then sixteenths, and some are even measured into thirty seconds. If you're not sure how small 
uh, your ruler goes, you can always look between the zero and the one. They usually have a measurement here that will tell you. So this tells me this goes down to a sixteenth of an inch. So I know the smallest measurement that I have there is a sixteenth of an inch. On a metal straight edge, you can see uh, the rest of the ruler is at a sixteenth of an inch, but between the zero and the one, it goes all the way down to a thirty-second of an inch, and they have that uh, right here. And then also it tells you when it transitions to a sixteenth of an inch. So uh, if you ever get lost and aren't sure uh, how big your measurement is, I always divide my, my inch mark in half. I know that's a half. If I divide that in half, it becomes a quarter. If I divide that in half, it becomes an eighth. And then divide that in half, it becomes a sixteenth. So that's kind of how I figure out if I don't have that to guide me um, how big my measurements are. So that's just the way I do it. Hopefully that helps.